Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Lore. Today we'll be doing a complete list of clone trooper ranks, types, and the different armor variations in Star Wars canon. We will cover all legends, clone trooper types, and variations in a separate video. So let's get to it. First up we'll be discussing the different types of standard issue clone trooper armor. First up was the phase 1 armor. This was the standard issue armor for the clone troopers during the early portions of the Clone Wars. So like what you would see in Attack of the Clones, pretty much that standard white armor. Uh, this armor was created by the Kaminoans, their armor smiths, and the phase 1 armor consisted of 20 form-fitting plates of lightweight platoid alloy composite. And these plates were all sealed to a black temperature controlled bodysuit. And the bodysuit was pressurized so you did have some protection in space for a short amount of time. And it was designed to kind of resemble the Mandalorian armor uh, inspired by Jango Fett. So you can kind of see those similarities. Ultimately, the Phase 1 armor proved to be pretty uncomfortable for the troopers, and it didn't really carry a lot of specialized equipment and accessories, so this led to a need for a different kind of armor, which led to the Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor. The Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor was standard issue for Clone Troopers during the later days of the Clone Wars. It was more advanced than the Phase 1, and was capable of supporting more specialized equipment. Uh, unlike the Phase 1 though, it did not feature an internal life support system. So the Phase 1 and Phase 2 armor were the basic standard sets of armor for the Clone Troopers. So at the start of the Clone Wars, the rank of troopers were determined by the color worn on their helmet, arm, and shoulder armor. Except for a Clone Cadet, which was just a Clone Trooper still in training on Kamino. So if you just had the standard white, you had no color features, you were just a standard trooper. If you wore light green, that meant you were a sergeant, so you could command squads made up of nine troops. Blue would indicate you were a lieutenant, so you would command platoons made up of 36 troops. The color red meant you were a captain, and you would command 16 companies made up of 144 troops. Yellow meant you were a commander, and could command regiments made up of 2,304 troops. So it's important to note that those colors were pretty much only with the Phase 1 armor. With the development and distribution of Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor, Clone Troopers no longer use those color markings to denote rank. Instead, the color patterns on troop armor uh, signified legion designation and position instead. Those color designations kind of fell out of use because of the Jedi. They actually encouraged the clones to express their individuality, and so as a result, the clone army gradually adopted a new system which they customized their armor more with those unique color schemes and markings. Here are all the different types of clones and their armor variants in no particular order. The Advanced Recon Commandos, also known as ARC Troopers, were an elite set of Republic clone troopers. They received special training and often served as leaders or were given challenging assignments. They had a unique armor set which was different from standard clones. They had a double sided pauldron, special belt, and survival gear. Advanced Recon Force Trooper, sometimes shortened to ARF Troopers. They were more intelligent and better trained in survival skills compared to other clones. They wore light armor for stealth and speed, and often rode all-terrain recon transports, ATRTs. A variation of ARF Trooper were those that served on the Coruscant Guard. They would hunt for suspects using an animal called a Massif. Biker Advanced Recon Commando, also called Bark Troopers. These were specialized clones trained to ride the Bark speeders. They wore a modified armor with a helmet that directed attention forward in order to avoid the distractions that could be dangerous while traveling on the speeders at high speeds. A clone gunner wore a helmet with additional noise insulation and a reinforced shoulder and chest armor as safeguards against the kick and roar of cannons that they controlled in battle. A clone ordnance specialists were specialized clones in the Republic. They were also called bomb squads. 
and they were trained to disarm and dispose of bombs and any explosive device. This was considered one of the most dangerous jobs in the army, as it required a gentle touch, steady nerves. Besides deactivating bombs, bomb squad members would also have to store and safeguard disabled bombs in hostile war conditions. Bomb squad troopers wore custom orange markings on their armor and an insignia on the left shoulder to signify their bomb disposal role. Clone paratroopers wore modified phase 2 clone trooper armor, they had a unique circular helmet, and they were equipped with jetpacks in order to safely descend onto the battlefield below. Clone scuba troopers wore a set of white armor that was fitted with six underwater propulsion jets to aid in their movement. To survive underwater, they carried a scuba backpack kit that was equipped with gill grills and a pair of breathing tubes that would circulate the oxygen into their helmets. They also had a special scuba trooper rifle, a double-barreled gun equipped with a flashlight. They also wore these white flippers which could be attached to their boots. Their breathing equipment and armor allowed them to survive for extended periods of time in the ocean in battle. The clone cold assault trooper had specialized armor that was specifically designed for protection to the wearer in extremely low temperatures and it was comfortable enough to allow them to effectively operate within this cold environment. Clone trooper pilots were bred to pilot the Republic starfighters and the various vehicles that were throughout the army of the Republic. Depending on the vehicle and time during the Clone Wars, the actual armor and life support that the pilot would wear would vary pretty widely. Clone commandos, also called Republic commandos, were elite soldiers on the battlefield. The commandos had special training and were more lethal and efficient than any average clone so soldier. During the Clone Wars, there was two commando teams, Clone Force 99 and Delta Squad. And these squads were of four, and they were deployed on covert missions across the galaxy. Mandalorian drill sergeants were recruited by Fett himself to train these Republic commandos. The Republic commandos had special gear and weapons that would vary from mission to mission. Galactic Marines wore special body armor with maroon or white coloration and a backplate. They were usually armed with DC-15A blaster rifles, but were also equipped with Wester M5 blaster rifles. The Marines were distinguished by their unique visor gear, which was designed to keep out various hazards such as snow, sand, airborne fungus, and ash. Clone Flame Troopers were a special branch of clones that specialized in the use of BTX-42 Heavy Republic flamethrowers, as well as other incendiary weapons. Flame Troopers wore specialized armor designed to counter the heat that they would often put in or that their weapons would give off. Clone navigation officers were clones who assisted in crewing starships for the Republic Navy. They were specifically trained in technical and tactical aspects of naval command. They did not sport any phase one or phase two armor, but instead sported the traditional apparel of the Navy command. Riot clone troopers were armed with batons and riot shields. The riot clones could be distinguished by the red markings on their armor, similar to that of the standard shock troopers of the Coruscant Guard. Clone scout troopers were bred for recon missions and for agility. The scout troopers were equipped with highly advanced plastoid armor. They also had wider vis visor plates that allowed a larger visual area. They were usually armed with either a DC-15A blaster rifle or DC-15S, though on occasion they would use a sniper rifle as well. Their armor would typically be camouflaged to blend in. Clone shock troopers were secretly bred apart from other clones. Initially they wore the same phase 1 armor as other clones with distinctive red markings. Later when the phase 2 armor was introduced, the red color scheme continued, but now the majority of armor was covered in red. They received special training for deployment in urban environments, so they were really proficient in close quarters combat. They served primarily as security police for the Senate, and also as prison guards. Special Ops clone troopers were clones who were trained to move more quickly and quietly to detect enemies at a distance. They wore advanced gears that improved their senses. They had large headphones that were integrated into their trooper's helmets, which gave them enhanced hearing and allowed them to pick up vibrations close, but they also gave them extra protection for their ears. Their armor usually had a dark color for camouflage purposes. Desert Troopers wore desert camouflaged ARF Trooper armor that bore a yellow marking. 
Desert Troopers were known to be equipped with the standard DC-15S blasters and DC-15A blaster rifles. Blurg Troopers were clones who would mount Blurgs in battle. They served as cavalry on various worlds and areas where ATRTs or other walkers were impractical to use. The Blurgs were capable of mowing down dozens of battle droids with a single charge. They were standardly equipped with flamethrowers and helmets. Stealth pilots flew experimental ships for the Republic. They had their own unique armor and were seen in canon with Anakin Skywalker piloting a stealth ship. Clone medics wore the standard armor with a medical insignia on their armor. They carried DC-15S blaster rifles and spare ammunition like other clones, as well as medical equipment. They usually had a laser scalpel, two viral scalpels, and two laser cauterizers. They also had a backpack that contained numerous bandages and backed up products. In addition to clone trooper medics, there were also clone medical officers that were specifically stationed aboard hospital stations and ships throughout the galaxy. Security clones on Kamino were under the command of General Shock T during the Clone Wars. They were in charge of security on Kamino and were identified by gray markings. In addition to these clone types and armor variants, there were also deformed clones that they would use for a variety of menial tasks. Lastly, Stormtrooper armor. You can count this if you want to be picky, as they did eventually switch to the Stormtrooper armor and became the first recruits. Thanks for watching. If you think I missed something, be sure to check out my Legends video first, as they have some unique clones there, and maybe one day those will be canon. Please subscribe and check out my other videos. I'll see you on the next video.